Welcome to NCIX Tech Tips. Today's episode is going to be about gigabytes entry into the Z77 chipset market. So that is Intel's latest platform supporting the second and third generation Core i3, i5, and i7 processors on LGA1155. And we're going to focus on their 3D power, their 3D BIOS, talking a little bit about what that means, as well as digging into what Lucid Virtue MVP brings to the table compared to the older Lucid Virtue issue, which we first saw on the H67 chipset. Now we'll do a brief overview of the general Z77 features. So feature number one is support for next generation Intel processors with the uh, Ivy Bridge code name. Feature number two is support for PCI Express 3.0 natively on this chipset with full interoperability once again with Ivy Bridge CPUs which are required for PCI Express 3.0 operation. Next is Intel integrated USB 3. So third party chipsets are no longer needed for USB 3 functionality. However, the motherboard manufacturers have the option of adding additional USB 3 ports with a third party chipset which Gigabyte has done on the UD5H. Lucid Virtue MVP is another key feature of this new platform as well as support for DDR3 1600 megahertz JDAC modules. So beyond that, we don't have too many changes from Z68, but Gigabyte has done a few things to make their Z77 boards really stand out. So they've once again continued to increase the quality of their boards. So they've done little things like, for example, individual fuses on their USB ports. So what that means is if a, if a port shorted and a fuse blew on someone else's motherboard, it might knock out a pair of ports. It might knock out a cluster of four ports, depending on how many fuses they've used. Gigabyte tries to overbuild their boards to the point where even in the event of a failure, it will fail less than something else. That's the idea here. They've also got their 3D BIOS, which we're going to take a look at in a minute, which is a graphical UEFI BIOS, allowing for easy configuration. Finally, there's the evolution of their ultra durable technology. So we've got UD4, which includes a completely redesigned glass fabric PCB, which allows it to have better moisture protection. So if you're in uh, a, a humid client, such a, a client climate, such as in Hong Kong, you are going to be more resilient to the moisture in the air, as well as improving the resistance to electrostatic discharge. Finally, 3D power is just their way of saying they have digital power on the memory CPU, integrated GPU, and the uncore of the CPU. I know no one really uses that word anymore, but VTT. And it's got Intel LAN as opposed to third-party LAN, and it has a headphone amplified onboard audio, which we've seen on the G1 series of boards before, but not yet on a simple UDX series board. So that is a huge step in the right direction. I'm a big fan of that feature. Some other cool features that I totally forgot to mention last time is the fact that this board does support Intel Smart Response technology, which allows you to use an SSD to cache your hard drive, including Gigabyte's exclusive Easy Smart Response, which basically turns the Smart Response setup process, which on other board, other board manufacturers is a real pain, into pretty much a one button thing. Not only that, but you can also use an mSATA SSD to cache your hard drive, so you don't even have to use up an additional SATA port or an additional bay in your case in order to take advantage of that. Last but not least, Gigabyte still has their on-off charge functionality, allowing you to charge your devices at a faster rate with one of the front USB 2 front panel headers, even when the system is powered off. Gigabyte's 3D BIOS is not really intended for advanced users. There's actually an advanced button right here. You go ahead, you click on that, you're advanced, you'll probably be happier. However, what it does do is it simplifies the options for new users who aren't really familiar with the layout of the BIOS. So for example, all I have to do is click on the SATA ports and I can see drive control features, adjust things like AHCI, IDE, and RAID mode options. And they're all here in a nice, pretty little pop-up. Same thing for CPU and memory, so system tuning. Just go ahead and click this, and all of my basics are in here, including frequency controls, memory timings, as well as voltage adjustments. So basically, we've got 3D power, so there's your power regulation, voltages, again, current, thermals. So there's still fairly adv advanced options in here, but it's just the presentation. So this allows us to change things on the rear panel, moving down to the expansion slots, 
And finally, the UEFI dual BIOS. So that covers most of our basics. And then moving into, aha, here we can control our boot devices, language, fan control, which is fairly basic. It just allows you to set normal, silent, or manual pretty much. And then the time allows us to see the time here or not see the time here. And we can load the defaults or we can save and exit. We're going to go into advanced mode just to show you guys, yes, this is more like what you're probably used to. And if you are a more advanced user, you will likely be significantly more comfortable in here. Now, Virtue MVP works much the same way as the original Virtue with a couple of small tweaks. So actually, I shouldn't say small tweaks, significant tweaks. So number one is that you no longer have to worry about whether you're plugged into the dedicated graphics card or the integrated graphics card on the back of the motherboard. You can be in whatever mode you want, regardless of where you're plugged in. Number two is they've added a couple of additional modes. So one of the additional modes is high performance, which improves the overall game performance and frame rate, but this is highly dependent on support within the Lucid Virtue MVP software. And the other one is Virtual VSync, which allows you to keep the in-game VSync on, but have frame rates that run above 60 FPS. Now, these are perhaps not as important based on the re performance results that we got as the fact that Virtue MVP does not have nearly the same performance impact on your system as the original Virtue did. Because the whole point of Virtue for me as an end user is that I can quickly encode video using QuickSync from Intel and I can also enjoy the benefit of my dedicated graphics card for games. It used to be that there was at least about a 15 to 25% performance hit just for enabling it, which makes it a deal breaker for me. I'm not going to use that. Now, ahem, based on this beautiful graph that I've created, you can see that with the GTX 580 running alone versus the GTX 580 running with Virtue versus hyper performance, we're pretty much within the margin of error. So anywhere from about 80 to 85 FPS at 1080p with high details on. So that is a phenomenal improvement with Virtue MVP, which is featured on this Z77 board as well as other Z77 boards that have onboard graphics. So the basic conclusion here is whether you're using a second or a third generation Intel Core i3 or i5 processor, the Z77 platform is going to be a good choice. It is backwards compatible and almost all of the new features with the exception of PCI Express 3.0 will benefit you even if you're using a last generation processor rather than the Ivy Bridge CPU that is mostly intended to go with it. So I hope this has been a bit of an educational video on what Gigabyte has done to keep their lineup fresh as well as to show you guys the capabilities of the upgraded Lucid Virtue MVP. Thank you for watching.